a couple of gentlemen who are here before the game as well. Ex-pros, former Tiger Dean Windus and former Saint Francis Bernali. Cheers, Steve. Hi there. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah good. Yeah, uh, Francis, you're smiling. Although you were quite confident before the game. Uh, yeah, I don't, don't quite know why I'm smiling other than I've enjoyed my day here, other, other than the result of the side. Um, I was right, Saints would score one goal. Um, I didn't think City would get a couple of goals, but uh, you know, to, to their credit, they, they, they stuck with it. Um, especially given that Southampton scored such an early goal, I thought, here we go. It was, you know, the atmosphere was really quiet, wasn't it? And looking at the City side, you thought, you can see this is going to be a long day for them. And um, you know, to their credit, they're hanging there. Uh, Southampton didn't kill them off with that second goal. Uh, they were knocking the ball around, looked pretty at times, but didn't really create that, that opening to get a second chance to, to score again. Um, and football being what it is, as we know, City did well to get back into the game, scored that equaliser, and you could see the lift and the confidence that that came into the side and the, the, the supporters, and, and a wonderful second goal to, to win it as well. You know, great free kick, good header from doors. Um, and yeah, des you know, my opinion, deserve winners on the day. Southampton should have done more. What do you think Southampton were lacking, particularly in the second half? A second goal. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you know, apart from the obvious. Um, yeah, th th I think they were, looking at it, it, in my opinion, I felt they were quite comfortable just knocking the ball around, finding, not say it was easy is the wrong word, but they seemed quite happy to keep it at 1-0 and almost confident that they would have kept it at that. But, uh, you know, they, they need to be a little bit more adventurous and a little bit more... Um, creative in the last third to have created a ch an opportunity to have scored again and they didn't do that and they've pun been punished for it. Dean, we'll come to you. This has been a while since we've stood on the stage. I think August was probably the last time that we were here yeah. getting very excited about a game and what a what a turnaround that was. I don't know what all the fuss is about really, do you? Yeah. It's just... <laughs> no, just... yeah, but you were quite down before the game. Yeah, I've been down for the last six months. It's just a... No, listen, it's a fantastic result against a very good Southampton side. To be quite honest with you, and you know, like like Franny said, the the first goal give the supporters a lift, give the players a lift, and then we felt as though yeah, we, we, there's a little bit more belief to to go win the game, and you know what I'll fit into win a win a game with a goal centre half with a head in the ball like that, like a centre forward really, and you know Mick will be delighted now because of international coming up, puts us up the table a little bit. David Moyes was here, sat sat near us in the director's box watching us because that's our next game. Yeah. And you've got to win them games what are around about you. Sunderland are w probably will be at the bottom of the league towards the end of the season. And they're the games that you've got to win. So, you know, David Moyes will be going away thinking this is going to be a tough game for us next 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 game comes along. We saw a lot of ball first half, but we, we weren't really breaking through. What do, you, what, what do you think went on in the dressing room the second half? Well, it was, I think, listen, at the start at the start of the game, the confidence is, is low, obviously. You know, you, you expect that after losing six on the bounce. So you don't want to, you know, we said there, it's, didn't we stay in the game as long as we can? Then they get a penalty after six minutes. Yeah. Your two centre forwards get carried off, and you think, "Oh, here we go again here." But then, you know, full full credit, you know, Snodgrass came on because he had to because of the, the injuries. Um, set, you know, scored the goal, set the goal up, and Mick will be absolutely delighted because he'll be more delighted with the character. I said there, it's not about how you play; it's getting a result. And I had a study and took a one-one. You know, I was sat there thinking for the first time ever, I'm going to be right, and then he scores, so I was wrong again. So. Um, <laughs> But no, delighted, obviously delighted, and I, I'll enjoy my pint tonight now. <laughs> so the fact, the fact that we've won after all these games um, and the fact that it's nice to get that confidence back, it's, it's that age-old question. Is, is it now a bad thing that we've got the international break? Somebody just said that. No, I, 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 if I was playing now, I think I'd be, I'd be glad of a break now. You know, so I would have a break because I wasn't good enough to be an international, so I would have a break. But um, you know, Robert Snodgrass was delighted to to get on the pitch because I know that he wanted to play against England, you know, for Scotland. So he wanted to be fit, and he's come up trumps for us today. But I think Mick will be delighted just with a little bit of a break now, you know, especially with the two lads going off injured. Yeah. You know, I think that Hernandez with a pulled his groin looks that way, and the other lads done his knee. You know, I don't know how severe it is, but you know, Mike will probably be thinking, yeah, it's a good time to have a little bit of a bit of a breather. And then that fortnight we go to Sunderland, having seen what you've seen today and Sunderland doing well yesterday, can we do it? Well, it's amazing, isn't it? You know, Southampton beating in, into Milan on Thursday and then yeah. Hull City beat you 2-1. You know, it's amazing. And Sunderland getting the result yesterday, 
always got a chance when you've got Jim and Defoe on the pitch as well. You know, he's going to be a goal scorer. So, you know, I think they'll be delighted with the results today. And, and obviously now, be looking forward to the Sunderland game instead of thinking, oh, we're going to get an, uh, another win. But, you know, Mick will be delighted and I'm sure he'll, he'll enjoy his night tonight. Francis, it's been lovely to see you here today. Uh, you've been telling us all about your exploits before the game and all your fundraising efforts. If you weren't here before the game, he's, he's been part of a team helping to raise over £400,000 uh, for charity. What's next for you? Uh, well, my wife's not in earshot, so I could tell you maybe I'd like to do something again in the future. Um, <laughs> if I mention anything at this point, I think I'll be looking for somewhere to live for, for the rest of my days. But um, now the body's got to settle and... Uh, you know, I, as I've said, never say never. I, I wouldn't be surprised if I do something again in some shape or form. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I think it's still a little bit too early from the last challenge and finishing just yet. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see. But um, as we know, I think it's something that's touched pretty much all of us uh, in some shape or form. So um, I want to keep doing my bit. If that means putting my body through the mill, emotionally, physically and, and mentally, then uh, I'm prepared to do that to raise some more funds. But firstly, the missus wants you to do some DIY. Yeah, there's a bit of payback. You know, they're, the family supported me on the challenge. My, my two children, they're obviously grown up now, but uh, the wife, they were part of the support team. They were a crucial part of that as well. And they, they worked their socks off for the two weeks that we were uh, on the challenge. And it, and it consumed all of us for the months and months beforehand. The logistics, you know, any, any time we're in the house, every conversation was around the challenge. So we'll, we'll have a little bit of downtime and um, we'll see what happens in the future. Well, it's been a delight to see you. Thank you very much Thank for you. being here. Thank Francis Benali, good luck. With Southampton as well in the Europa League for the rest of the season. And Dean Windus, of course, club ambassador. Francis Bernali and Dean Windus.